we haven't gone on as fast as I thought we might because when we got to this stage and uh, had got this plastered up and could look at the curvature of the pot, it became obvious in discussions with uh, Jean-Luc that, um, that something had gone wrong somewhere. Um, and it was very difficult to see where it was. And in the end, after much discussion, we came to the conclusion that this piece of pot here, this whole section, was in fact leaning out too much. And it was making the top of the pot oval instead of round. So what we had to do was to cut down here and then through the plaster here. And of course, I had to cut through all those epoxy bars that are coming up. I cut the plaster away and then cut V-shapes into the epoxy bars so they didn't break, but with a little acetone on them, they could be softened. And of course, I'd already cut down there with a saw and round here and softened up these joints. So what we did then was to just gently, these had had some acetone pads on to soften up the adhesive, which we've talked about before. And I was able to pull the pot in at the top about 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I know that doesn't sound very much, but it made the alignment between this piece and this piece much better before this piece was leaning out too much. So when I put some new adhesive on and let it dry overnight, I was able to put um, in the V-shape pieces in the epoxy st strips, I was able to put fresh epoxy adhesive in and then cover the whole thing up again with plaster. And you can see the two tram lines where I did that. So the bottom is now complete. Uh, the only thing worth mentioning is, again, this whole terrible business about the pot spalling, um, one layer coming away from the other. And it, it's very evident here. But over here, a piece is completely missing. So what I decided to do was to bring the plaster up to it and then cut down at a 45 degree angle so that people can clearly see what happens when this comes off. This is what it will look like. The pot there is missing. And then we continue with the pot when it's painted again over here. Of course, the paint will be two or three shades off this color so that it's, uh, it's very evident that it's, um, it's makeup and not the original pot. The other thing I've now started, and, and we did discuss before about how we're going to fix the, the rim and shape. So what I decided to do in the end was to take a sausage again of epoxy resin and shape it around the top of the pot here to get this exact curve, put it down on the board on some saran wrap and let it dry, and then fix it in position with a little soft epoxy paste. In doing that again, it became evident once again that this piece of pot here was curving in too much. You don't find these things out until you're trying to line everything up at the last moment. So in fact, this piece of pot here was tilting in too much. So what I've just done over the lunch hour, um, I cut here, and I cut here, and I cut there, and I cut down through there, through the epoxy paste. I put some acetone pads in the fume hood on these joints here, soften them up. And at the same time as I was doing that, I took a hot air blower um, and made this really quite hot. You could just touch it. And it becomes soft again at that stage. So as I was pulling this piece of pot gently out like this, the glue doesn't dissolve. It, it gets to a rubber-like stage, and you need to catch it at that stage. You can actually bend that out. And I pushed this piece here in at the same time. So I altered the curve here and altered the shape of the pot. That's all complete now, and we've all agreed that this um, that, that is about the curvature of the pot that we need, and that's going to be about the shape of it.